that she had this, this son who also, like her, had a death wish for the ex-husband. And, 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 and Jack and Victoria move in together and the kid's around. And he's probably 20 years old or so. So some Saturday, he's home, it was a Saturday morning, and Jack finds himself up early, 6.30 in the morning, and sitting at the kitchen table. And the kid came in and said, listen, you know, I, I, I heard about you, you were, you're this great lawyer, you once represented the Mafia. And Jack says, well, no, I never represented the Mafia, there's no Mafia. They have this long story. And the kid kind of slides into this discussion, unsettling to say the least. But you know murderers, don't you? The kid asked. Yes, I mean, no. What's this fascination with murder, the mob, and all that stuff? I could kill my father, Grant said, as if he didn't even hear Jack. No sweat. Just put a bullet right through his head and feel no guilt. Jack took a mouthful of coffee and stared out, stared out the window at the rain beating on the deck rail. He sighed and thought how gray and cold the morning was. Grandson, you're a good kid. You're too good, too nice to do that. Don't even think it, don't even think it. He's your dad, your flesh and blood. You can never do that, you can never be a killer. It's just not in you. The kid didn't hear a word. I could just blow out his brains and feel nothing. Now, having to talk this conversation and you can just imagine Jack pausing and looking out and it's cold and it's raining and he sees the drops bouncing off the rail. Jack can't have that conversation when it's just sitting by the harbor and it's sunny and palm trees are sashayed. And that's how I bring nature into that scene to give you the backdrop, to give you the feeling of what's going on. Um, Well, J things happen and Jack has to take leave of Victoria. And he actually escapes from what he calls and makes reference to several times in the book. He escapes from this world of lawyers, lies, and lipstick. And if you look at the cover, lawyers, lies, and lipstick, the world of lawyers, lies, and lipstick is the city. This is a cityscape on the front cover. So he escapes and he goes to the Caribbean. He finds himself in Antigua. What does he find? He finds himself in Antigua, the island of Antigua, okay? And, and so he's in Antigua for a while, and he decides to leave. And so now, he's leaving Antigua. He has left the world of lawyers, lies, and lipstick. He has left his law practice. He has left Victoria. He has left the crazy son, and he's trying to regroup in the Caribbean. So he's, he, he, he buys a sailboat, and he leaves. He leaves Antigua. As the smoke, smoke from Montserrat's volcano rose above the horizon to port, he thought about time. How much time would it take him to sail to the States? Einstein said time was relevant, and of course he was right. It would take as much time as the wind and currents would allow. Be it a month or several, it made no difference, as he was in no hurry to do anything or get anywhere. As the autopilot steered the vessel beyond sight of the smoke, he realized that he had lost the qualitative aspect of time. Stop and smell the roses. How many times had people told Jack that? Jack spoke to the ocean, or perhaps to God. I now understand. It's all about the quality of time, isn't it? The time you give us isn't measured in minutes, hours, days, or years. The serration of the, ser serration of the waves was like a chorus echoing and affirming his every word. It's about what we do with our time, how we enjoy and appreciate this world. It's about enjoying the journey and loving the people we meet along the way. It's about feeling the power of the ocean's currents and energy from the sun. It's not about the number of sunrises and sunsets, but about the beauty and promise, each one, uh, beauty and promise of each one. He felt ridiculous talking out loud that way to no one that he would find himself having the most meaningful conversations at sea. And over time, they would become perfectly natural for the lonely man. All right? So, 
couple of things nature is doing there. Nature is the backdrop, it's setting the scene, it's setting feelings, and nature is also a person. There's a personification going on there. And he's talking, he's talking to his surroundings as if, and if he were mentally ill, he might hear nature talking back. And you as the reader, you might ask yourself that question. Is he becoming mentally ill? Does he become mentally ill? Is this the beginning of that? That's how I knew, use nature there. Any comments? Yes, sir. It, it, it sounded like he was actually quite comfortable with that conversation 